Well, hello there, beautiful shrimp people. Welcome to Mark Shrimp Talks. In today's video, we are going to take a look at our Blue Dream Shrimp Top here. And this is going to be its 22nd month update. So let's start by having a look at the tank itself in general and see how it has done over these 22 months, which is quite a long time. It's almost two years. And I would say that there probably isn't too many Blue Dreams in here now. There is a big mix of different types of shrimp, but definitely not just Blue Dreams. And I would say that the jungle vol has exploded in this tank, which we will address in this video as well. Because I wanted, guys, I want to try and maybe give this a little bit of a trim, maybe once a year, just to actually make it easy for me to get rid of all this duckweed. Yeah, I know, I know you guys laugh in the back saying we can't get rid of duck, duckweed, but you can, but you just have to make sure you get rid of all of it, guys. And it's not easy if you have the jungle vol like this just lying all over the place. We'll also maybe take a look at the sponge filter, see how clogged it is, just make sure it's actually working fine. Look at all these fish. These are all endlers in here, different sizes, males and females. This tank will be getting a new light real, real soon, I think, as well. So, yeah, we're going to do a water change in here, and we'll start removing some of this jungle fowl, and then I'm going to knit off some of the duckweed there. And, guys, I, th I think what we'll do as well is we'll probably feed them so you guys can see them, and I'm going to give you an extra treat as well. It's not going, going to be just sitting at the side of the tank like this and trying to see through this plastic. What we're going to do is, I'm actually going to put my macro camera in the tank, and we're going to feed them, and you'll be able to see them from inside the tank, right? So you have that all coming up. All right, let's see. I think the best place for you guys is probably right in this corner, which will give me a lot of space over here. You guys can look at the top of the tub while we do some maintenance. And I think what we'll do first, guys, is probably take out some water. I think, or shall we do the jungle fowl first? I think we might do the jungle fowl first because it'll be easier to remove if we take that out first. So yeah, so let's get a little bit of water in here first into our little tub. I have my shrimp safe siphon here that I've used for many, many years. Let's take a little bit of water out. And guys, this water in here just now is just in case there's any snails or stuff on the plants, right? So that's enough already. Let's take our scissors, little scissors, and let's start hacking away at this uh, jungle ball, right? So I'm going to make sure, guys, that when I'm doing this, I'm going to actually uh, shiggle these little pair of scissors around when I'm doing it so that if there's snails or fish or anything like that that's in there, it can get out of the way fast enough, right? So I'll show you a little example like this, you see? And then I'm going to cut. So it's like cutting the grass. I suppose, and I'm going to cut it all over the place like this, and we're just going to take out handfuls of stuff while we go along. Yeah, I can see the shrimp. There was a shrimp over this side that wanted to jump out the tank. That's not the plan, Mark. You can see this has been growing really well, and I'm putting it in water like this, guys, because um, I reckon that there will be snails and whatever else attached to this, and I don't want to kill them. So let's get this stuff out of our tank just now. We should go move it the way, fish and shrimps. And we should be good to go. By the way, yes, I do cut my own hair as well. <laughs> There's actually quite a lot. It's a wasser tang in this tank, which I'm quite surprised at. And here you see it all. It's a wasser tang. It's something I probably should I look it back into, I should look back into guys is actually you know, regrowing my Savoir Tang colonies here because yeah, I have let them go down to basically nothing. I only really have little pieces like this in my tanks now. So we're getting there already. And as always guys, this is going to look a little bit of a mess. You know what it's like after you do a little clean up of our stuff, how bad it's going to look. Yes, let's just uh, persevere with this and we'll see what still needs to be trimmed. Little shake, little shake, little fishies and stuff get out of the way. Because there is an awful lot of baby endlers in here. And I don't want to be snipping them. I don't want to be snipping the shrimp either, right? So we're just taking our time and across the back like this. 
little shake, make sure everything can get out of the way as much as possible. You know what I'm like guys, I don't want to I don't want to hurt anything unnecessarily. There's an awful lot of stuff here. Let's shake it in here as well because that will help get any snails off that are in there. Let's see how we're doing. Now, there's way more stuff in here than I thought there was actually. And as I said guys, this tank is going to look messy as F until this uh, jungle ball starts to grow a little bit better than it is. Let me just cut this bit off here. Cutting grass. Maybe I should have used a lawnmower instead to do this, but we're definitely getting there. As I can see there's an awful lot of submerged, it's, oh I was going to say submerged um, duckweed, but it's not, I think this is this Rotala. I thought I didn't have any of that left. It just goes to show. Guys, I'm specifically using my hands like this as well because if I use a net right now to get most of this, it'll probably catch a lot of the baby anglers. If I use my hand, I'm going to more or less guarantee that I'm not catching all the little baby fish. You see? Let's see what else is in here. I'm going to give it a number three haircut. <laughs> you know, I can actually see pothos in there, which is bizarre. It's away under the water. But um, probably not an awful lot of people know this, but pothos can be grown underwater. For a limited amount of time, I think. As in, where it comes from, it, it will be submerged. And uh, you get probably get a lot of the plant in the water a lot of the time. You're getting rid of the jungle vial here, that's for sure. Let me see what, you see what I mean under here, look? Well, there's actually a lot of it, look. It's a part of it here. It can't be grown like that under there, surely. It is. There's a there's, uh, pothos, a little cotton, and it's grown away under the water. That's bizarre. Let's push that back down because we don't want to take that out right now. We'll see. Is there any other big bits of struggling? Of all that we want to take away. I'm just being very careful what I'm looking at guys when I'm doing this because yeah, I don't want to cut any fish or, or little endlers or anything like that. And so, let's see a couple of bits of the bark. So we've got to get rid of the all this long stuff before you can actually really, really clean the tank out properly. But all this will help, you'll see, you'll see. Alright, maybe we should grab our little net, we have a little shrimp net here. Start to take out some of this duckweed and stuff that's in here. The duckweed's one of those ones, guys, that you miss one single bit and it regrows and it keeps on regrowing and it keeps on regrowing and keeps on regrowing. And eventually it gets very difficult to remove. But I have seen it in some of my tanks where if you, if you are patient and you are diligent with duckweed, you can't actually remove it. All these little floating bits, it's easier to get rid of this stuff more than you think. It's very hard to get rid of the bits that are stuck in plants underneath. A little bit of Anubis there, you see it? Right, let me grab a net really quickly. Maybe we should fill up our little container here with water first because we need to dock this net into our little tub here when we're emptying our stuff out, right? So let me actually get some more water here first. Let me get some more water. We'll let that fill up a little bit. Right, so the point in us having this other little tub here is that we will actually go through it for little fish, little shrimp, snails and whatever else, and they'll all be going back in here as well. So that's probably enough for now. Let's uh, see if we can mop up all this rubbish that's floating around. And guys, this is the way I do it, look. Take your time and just go like this. But right, most of the small fish will get out of the way. I've actually never caught a small fish doing this yet. They're incredibly fast at getting out of the way when they want to. Apart from that one. <laughs> I 
Let me see. Get more of it. Probably not going to get all of this it, but it was worth a try. All these wee floating bits of plants and whatever else. Get the worst of it here, guys, and then we can uh, start to look at our water changes and stuff. One more little scoop, all the stuff that's on the edge. You see it on the way around. Right, and there's a, a little bit of uh, stuff that you must remove. See all this stuff here on the edge as well? You must remove this, right? If you don't remove this stuff, what happens is when you do water changes, one of, this, one of these pieces here, it'll fall in the water and you'll have to start all over again. So you must remove that as well. So I've been using that melamine foam stuff for this. I've heard conflicting reports on it, guys, regarding if it's safe to use in an aquarium environment. Um, but I've actually seen no proof that it is actually not safe to use in an aquarium environment. I do get that people think it like dissolves and... I'm just going get, to get that melamine foam right now. I do get that people think it dissolves into the water column. But I see no evidence at all that it does any harm. Like this, you see it? We're just going to go around the edge here and mop up all the stuff here and I'm going to dip it into that water bucket that we just had there. See all this loose stuff? So you can do this in your glass aquariums as well and it cleans up the edge really, really nicely. This stuff will take off a permanent marker as well, so if you've marked any of your tanks with permanent marker, use this to get all of the crud off the sides, you see it? Use it to get all of the crud off the sides. Right, so it's never going to be perfect. Never will be perfect, but um, yeah, do the best that you can do. I'm going to just do a quick couple of wee bits here before we do our larger water change. I'm going to try and do at least half of this tub because we're going to need to take out that much water to actually check the sponge filter as well, right? So we'll do that too. It's already looking better, isn't it? What I like to do, guys, here is, is give it a little swirl like this, and it tends to move all the loose pieces that have been caught under the stems and whatever else. It brings everything up to the surface. You see like over here, you see it all coming up? All little bits that get, get caught behind leaves and under the water and whatever else. So yeah, you could be at this for hours doing this just with duckweed, but you can see how much it's already improved with us just removing the stuff that's on the surface. You see it? There's a big, see another bit of pothos, look. We might do something with that in this tank actually, pothos at a later date. Let me grab you. Alright, let's uh, find our container and we'll do our bigger water change. Right guys, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a different angle. You're on the other side of the tub looking across at me, right? so you should see me over here, our uh, rack is deep enough that we can actually put stuff in the other side, right? so let's take some water out, like this, and we'll continue to grab stuff off the surface, making sure, well trying to make sure that we don't actually grab any of the little fish, because there's tons and tons of these little endler babies in here, and it doesn't matter if we get the odd one guys, because we're actually going to go through all of our findings at the end. I won't do that on camera obviously, but you know, if, if uh, you do this, look at all the babies, how many there is on the shrimp, look at them, loads and loads. Yeah, if you do this, you're, you're guaranteed that you won't get so many bad ones, right? So yeah, let's check this filter as well while we're here. And I can see that there's a lot of shrimp actually on the filter right now. I wonder if you guys can see it. Let's see. Oh, the pleco is on it as well. I'm not sure you caught that there or not. But we had a, there's a little pleco that lives in this tank as well, so let's uh, actually try and get this out. And yeah, there's lots of shrimp on this. Let's see, there's plants growing into it. Jungle wall. And I have to bear in mind, guys, that when I put this back down, there's probably going to be shrimp in this hole here, so we'll have to give it a wee shugal to get all the shrimp away from this area here. Let's have a little look at the sponge filter. Yeah, there was a little baby bristle nose pleco on the top of it there. 
the snails. So, <coughs> so it's always worth giving your stuff a little rinse like this. Now what I normally do guys is I will take the filter off like this and see the sponge here? Uh, I'm going to give it a little turn like this. This will give the, the shrimp a little bit more of a chance to get off still. Right, and if there still is anything on, on this, even after all this time, we will get them in the bucket over here, right? So don't worry about thinking that I might actually accidentally kill shrimp and snails. I never do. I never do. Right, so I'm going to bring you back over here because I want you guys to see if this um, sponge is dirty or not. So let's see how dirty this sponge is. I find it very hard to tell sometimes if something's going to be very, very dirty or not. I have a feeling this one will be because all of my neocaridina tanks, the sponge filters, always seem to be like extra dirty. Mega, mega dirty. Right? So let's give this a squeeze in the moment of truth and see how... Oh yes, it is very dirty. <laughs> see, so it is worth cleaning your sponge filters every so often. So I probably did it maybe two months ago in this very tank. Uh, when we moved here and uh, guys you can just see how much junk is in the sponge filter right so the point in doing this guys is when you have uh, bacteria that is living on your sponge filters if, if the filter is clogged right that basically means that there's less room for your bacteria to grow in. so it's always worth taking your time like this and just knocking off all the dead stuff and removing all the gunk from it because then you will have uh, fresher bacteria colonizing stuff that's been um, been made vacant if you know what I mean if that's the proper word right so just do this a few times try not to get it all over your legs because I seem to do that an awful lot with sponge filters and this is probably clean enough now that we can put this back into the tank and it'll work hunky dory get back over there Alright guys, let's add in our sponge and stuff, let's get it back on here. Right, so bear in mind guys that as soon as we move this, this whole hole here, you can see it's all full of shrimp and stuff, there's loads of them all over the place, there's a lot of fish, right, we must get in there with our hand and disperse them, basically, yeah, my god, I can't believe how many shrimp is there. <laughs> right, so they'll all be wanting the goodies that we've actually uncovered from underneath the filter that they previously couldn't get. I can see loads of shrimp here, look. Look at that, look. Oh, little buggers. They're all over the place. Another one there, see if I can catch it with my hand. Looks like a big paint of fire red or something, look. Oh, I dropped it my fingers. Right, so just make sure you get your hand in here right before you put your sponge back in, right? So we have our setup back like this. Let's put the base on. Now this makes sure it's all together tightly. Get your hand in there like I suggested you do before. Clear the area. Just take your time, clear the area, and then get your sponge in right to the bottom. Now you must give your animals time, guys, to move out the way. Right, so there is our sponge done and dusted. What is this here? Feeding glass. Mark Shrimp Tank's feeding glass. So we'll put that somewhere else. You see it's got my logo on it? Looking good. Make sure there's no snails or anything like that on it. Right, guys, and what we might actually do here is we're going to fill this up with water. And, yeah, we are going to feed the tank, right? And I've not decided yet if I'm going to feed them now or if I'm going to feed them tomorrow because I just want to see how dirty this water, how, how badly it all get, gets kicked up and stuff when we actually put our water back in because it's going to be quite a nasty video for you guys if the water's a little bit murky. You see it has a little bit murky here? I don't want it. Look at all this awasa tank, look. Lovely jubbly stuff. So let, let's see, at the front here I want to make sure that our viewing portion of the window is um, opened. So move that that way just a little tad. You know I saw a shrimp there, it looks like a calcio. Or is it? The size of it, look. No, that, that is a... It was a tangerine tiger. So I got a lot of shrimp from my friend Peter as well, and a lot of these went into this tiger. So let's get this filled up, Mark. Stop blethering. Alright guys, I have my water ready here. My little pump just ready to go. My valve is open, that's why there's a little bit of water coming out here. Let's get the pump started. Like this, and this is how I do it. 
I actually have a control valve on my hose away, way down here that you guys can't see, and that's how I control the flow. I'll just give you an example. It's one of those ones that you use for garden hoses to control the flow. Right, and the reason this has to be on here, guys, is because this tub, for example, is lower than my reverse osmosis container. So just say, for example, I'm filling something up. If I don't stop the flow like this when I'm done, water will just keep on pumping out. And that's no good to anyone. Right, and I've had issues before where I've had reverse flows from, for example, my Opa'uli tank when it was full of salt water. When I originally filled it up, I didn't have this control valve on here. And water from the tank actually went back into the reverse osmosis container and it was all the water in there was just ruined basically. It was basically salt water and it was ruined. So yeah, let's get this water in here. The fish seem to enjoy a little blast, so yeah, let's get this up a little bit faster. There's loads and loads of plant protection in here for them as well. So don't worry about that guys. And, and the reason I do this like this this way specifically is because I think it helps to bring up all the duckweed and stuff that you can see, you see it? Like this, and if there's any rubbish in there, it helps bring it all up to the top as well. So it's a good way to do it. You can see my sponge filter there is working perfectly. I can actually see a lot of shrimp actually returned to the sponge filter already. And guys, I think what I'll do, right, is once this is filled up, I'm actually going to uh, let it settle before I put my macro camera and stuff in there because there's no point in me putting the macro camera in there until the water has cleared 100%, right? So we'll do that next. All right, guys, it is the next day and I have left this tank to clear up. And yeah, it is looking much, much, much better, isn't it? It's looking much, much cleaner. I'm glad I let it settle. I've actually put a little bit of food in there just to bring all the fish to the top, so hopefully you can see them all swimming around all these little endlers and stuff. And yeah, the tank itself in general looks much nicer. There's the odd bit of duckweed still, which I will deal with in a minute. And guys, we're going to add some food to the base here because I want you guys to see all the shrimp. I'm going to put the food over here somewhere. And I'm also going to place my macro camera into the tank over this side facing that way right so hopefully we get some lovely lovely footage right but there's nothing i like more than coming in here and just sitting and looking at the fish and all the shrimp look at all the shrimp down here and they look at them there's loads of them it's just awesome right so let's get this food into the tank and we'll get this Start going by adding in our macro camera this is my olympus tough tg4 is an older model but it still works perfectly well this is perfectly waterproof this camera it also has an awesome macro function that I use a lot. You guys will have seen it before. And guys, all I'm going to do here is switch it on like this. And you see how the camera's a little bit blurry? That's because it's in macro mode, right? It auto focuses itself. I'm going to now press record. So when you hear that noise, that's me recording. Right? And then I'm going to place the camera. So you should hear the water noise as well. And you'll hear, hear my voice, obviously. And I'm going to try and put the camera in an unobscured spot right at the back here somewhere. Hopefully I don't kick up too much dirt. You guys will be able to see that if I did right. And things like these plants and stuff in the front, guys, they have to be out of the way. So yeah, let's uh, move these. I had to cut off that little runner there. And hopefully you guys, your vision will be over here somewhere, at least over here. Right, so this is where I'm going to put the shrimp food. I'm going to use forceps and we're going to place it guys. This might not be perfect, the shrimp food might not be in focus, but you should get the gist of seeing all of these shrimp and the little bristlenose pleco because I can see that guy below my hand here. I'm going to put the food about here as far back as I can from the, the lens because the further back I get then there, there's probably a higher chance that you guys can actually see something right. So let's place the food here. Right, and let's see what actually comes to the front. 